Hello, this is Casey Labs with the third video on how to get power from a parallel resonance circuit. The topic of this video is capacitors. I have here a drawing on the board of a, a, a set of plates that represent a capacitor. As you can see, it's just two plates put together. In a capacitor, you create an E-field when you put a voltage across it. And this E field actually can have some momentum associated with it. In other words, it takes a little while to change that E field back and forth depending on how you set up your circuit. However, I have a couple pictures of some common capacitors here. These particular capacitors, as you can see, I've got one that's a couple that are uh, polar. And this one right here and this one right here are polar. They take lower voltages and they generally require you to set up your circuit such that they have plus and minus associated with them. If you don't set it up correctly they may blow up. I also have a couple of uh, nonpolar capacitors here and there's a whole bunch of other different types of capacitors that are available. These particular ones happen to be high wattage, uh, much higher wattage than one of the many of the electronics capacitors that you see in your phone. However, the end result is that they are a couple of plates that are put together in such a fashion that they create an E-field. Now, in a capacitor, we have a thing called charge. I'm going to use lower Q for charge, and that's equal to the voltage times the capacitance. Uh, we also have a thing called the change in the charge with respect to time. This is called a current. The current turns out to be equal to V omega C once you put in your sine wave and you take the derivative of it. So you end up picking up this omega uh, here when you want to find the current going through a capacitor. We're going to use these calculations later on to show uh, theoretically how you can get more power out of something than you put in. Incidentally, when you put these two plates across a resistor, you end up with a curve that looks like this and it's got a 1 over RC time constant associated with it. Now if you hook it up to a if you hook it up to a power source, an alternating current power source, it's not going to look anything like that. However, generally if you want to have a capacitance at rest, you want to get rid of all the current, so you have to let it go down to this point. Capacitors form the opposite side of a resonance circuit. And that's why we've gone over them a little bit, so you have a little bit of an understanding of what's going on here. You have an E-field being created in this one as opposed to a magnetic field being created in the uh, electromagnets. I think that's about it for right now. We will come back and visit this later on. This is Casey Labs with Capacitors signing out.